pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time I heard my mom or dad say, now, Steve, pay attention to what you're doing, I'd be a wealthy man. As I was growing up, it seemed like there was always something more fun that would distract me from what I was supposed to be doing. And the truth is, I still need reminders like that, particularly in my desire and my pursuit to become more like Jesus. If I, I suppose if I were to ask, we would all say that we need that type of reminder for our spiritual life. We want to follow him and we want to serve him more effectively, but there's so many distractions along the way in this life, aren't there? There's this little pursuit of materialism here, maybe, a little power trip there, an opportunity to chase pleasure for a little while. You can put your thoughts in there. But before long, we're spiritually disoriented. We become frustrated and actually perplexed. What are we going to do to get back on track in our pursuit of Jesus? And the answer is we need to take Paul's instruction to Timothy to heart. And it's in 1 Timothy 4.16. Actually, it's here where Paul literally says, Timothy, pay attention. And when he tells Timothy to pay attention, where his attention should be, listen to what he says. He says, keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you'll save both yourself and your hearers. Let me share it with you in the NIV. It says, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you'll save both yourself and your hearers. A paraphrased version, the New Living Translation, says it this way. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. So let's talk about two words that came out in those translations, life and doctrine. By God's grace, I've had the opportunity to invest a major part of my life in preaching and teaching God's word. A lot of my ministry has been sharing God's word in, in a variety of contexts. But for a long time now, I've been made very aware that those moments in the pulpit, they're just the tip of the iceberg. You see, Scripture reminds me over and over that my life has to match up with what I'm preaching and teaching. And my friend, it's the same with you. If you and I are speaking to others about the joy of freedom in Christ, then our lives need to show that we're walking in the freedom that Christ offers. If we're calling God's people to a greater level of commitment and sacrifice for God's kingdom, then we need to be stepping out in faith and seeking to grow in our commitment and our willingness to sacrifice. So Timothy's reminded of this when Paul tells him, even here in verse 12, he says, Let no one despise you for youth. Set believers, set the believers an example in speech and conduct in love and faith and purity. Nothing, absolutely nothing, hinders your or my witness for Jesus Christ more than a lack of authenticity. Literally, we need to pay attention to the way we live. Paul also says to Timothy, Pay attention to your doctrine. And he starts at chapter 4, verse 1, and he says, in, in latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons. You know, it's interesting, since the early days of the church, the enemy, the same enemy we deal with today, he has consistently attempted to distract God's people, leading them away from the core truths of Scripture. And a key responsibility of Timothy as a young pastor, and for you and I as believers even today, is to charge certain people, according to verse 3, he says, charge them uh, to, to not teach a different doctrine other than that which Christ has taught. You know, Satan continues to sow seeds of doubt in our minds about the authenticity and the authority of Scripture. This is one of our bedrock doctrines. One of, you know, some of the well-meaning and, and but misguided churches, they promote the notion that other religions, other belief systems, if sincerely held and practiced, may offer an alternative means of reconciliation with God. That, my friends, is far from the truth. That flies in the face of Jesus' own words when he said, I'm the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's in John 14, 6. Others are teaching that we need to do good works to be saved. That's a frontal attack on the gospel of Christ. If that was the case, we wouldn't even need a Savior. So what's in it for us? Paul assures us 
through his teaching here to Timothy and to us as we read it today, that the payoff in paying attention to your life and to your doctrine, to what you believe, it's huge. He says, if you do, look what he said in the end of verse 16, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So friends, take my parents' advice. Pay attention to what you're doing. Let's pray. Father, thank you. So many times and so many places in your word, we find specific instruction on how to live our lives, how to live them today in a world where false truth is being taught and being believed. And we are reminded, as Paul charged Timothy, to pay attention to, to our teaching and to what we believe, to our life and its testimony, and to the proper truth of God's word. So God, I pray that we will literally just pay attention and if we do, we'll save both ourselves and our hearers. We'll be able to be an effective witness for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for the opportunity we have each week to meet like this and to do this devotional. I pray that it will challenge the hearts of hearers today. In Jesus' name, amen.